Tootles Tudor Trivia. Hi, welcome to Teasel's Tudor Trivia with Teasel the dog. Now, Teasel has become very aware of the fact that her owner, i.e. me, that I really enjoy debunking myths and correcting inaccuracies. So today she thought she'd share one of her favourite Tudor myths, uh, which involves her second favourite Tudor monarch, Queen Elizabeth I. Now, she likes Queen Elizabeth I because she likes her fashion. She thinks that, uh, that uh, Elizabeth really knew how to dress. Very fashion-conscious dog is Teasel, as you'll know from her nappies or diapers that she wears. So she's going to share her thoughts, aren't you, Teasel? And if you're going to pay attention, my dear. She's going to share her thoughts on the Bisley Boy legend. What do you think of the Bisley Boy legend? Poppycock, she says. Now, you might not have heard of the Bisley Boy legend, but Teasel has. She's done her research and she's labelled it complete poppycock. Now, this is a legend that was made famous by the famous author Bram Stoker, who you'll probably know from the story, the uh, novel Dracula, which of course has been made into so many films and TV series and the like, hasn't it? Now, Bram Stoker, yes, I know it is poppycock, you can tell them that. Uh, Bram Stoker wrote about the Bisley Boy legend in his 1910 book, Famous Impostors. Bram Stoker had heard of this legend, um, a May Day tradition, at um, a village, what are you doing? At a village, the village of Bisley in Gloucestershire. You're trying to get properly on my knee now, aren't you? That's it. Oh yes, we're going to have a couple. Now Bisley is a village in Gloucestershire and at May Day, their May Day celebrations, they would have a boy who would dress up as the May Queen and he wouldn't just do that, he'd dress up as Elizabeth I as the May Queen. So Stoker thought he'd look into the origins of this legend and he did some digging and um, he found out uh, quite a lot of stuff that he published in his 1910 book as a chapter on imposters, famous imposters. According to the Bisley Boy legend, a young Princess Elizabeth was sent with her governess to stay near the village of uh, Bisley, to stay at the manor of Overcourt uh, for her health to sort of recuperate. While they were at Bisley, the governess received word that King Henry VIII was coming to visit his daughter. So the household started to make preparations for his visit, uh, but unfortunately Elizabeth was poorly. And on the day of his visit, before he actually arrived at the manor house, Elizabeth died. Madge thought she'd put in an appearance as well. You know, you can't have Teasel's Tudor trivia without Madge making an appearance. Now, of course, there was panic in the household because King Henry VIII, yes, your very favourite Tudor, was coming to visit his daughter and his daughter had died. And Henry VIII had a bit of a reputation for being rather ill-tempered. Um, yes, some executions and such like. So nobody wanted to tell him that his daughter had died. Um, so what they did instead is they set off for the village to find someone that could take her place. But it was such a small village that there wasn't a girl of a similar age. However, there was a boy and he'd actually acted, well, he'd played with Elizabeth. So he knew Elizabeth quite well. He'd been her playmate and he had sort of similar looks to her. So what they did is they substituted this boy for the princess. Um, which seems a bit of a daft idea, but they dressed him in Elizabeth's clothes and they passed him off as Elizabeth for the duration of the king's visit. And apparently the king didn't notice. Stoker writes that the king didn't suspect a thing. He writes, Elizabeth had been brought up in such dread of her father that he had not, at the rare intervals of his seeing her, been accustomed to any affectionate effusiveness on her part. And in his hurried visit, he had no time for baseless conjecture. So the king apparently hadn't noticed anything. He was used to Elizabeth not going near him. But they didn't just substitute this boy for that one visit. 
they carried on with this subterfuge and this boy grew up and became Queen Elizabeth I, according to the Bisley Boy legend. And Bram Stoker goes as far in this chapter of his book as, say, as giving an identity to this boy, saying that he was the son of Henry Fitzroy, Duke of Richmond, the king's illegitimate son, and his wife, Mary Howard. And that's why he looked very similar to Elizabeth. Now, Teasel, what do you think? Yeah, she says complete poppycock. In fact, she said a word that I really can't repeat. No, we can't say that. That's what she thinks of this legend. Now, why does she think that this legend is poppycock? Well, that's because she's done her research into Elizabeth I and the stories about her and King Henry VIII's reign. And she knows that Henry Fitzroy and Mary Howard never consummated their marriage because they were advised not to by King Henry VIII. They never cohabited uh, because Henry VIII was worried about Fitzroy dying young, which actually he did. So they never consummated their marriage and there's no evidence that they had a son that could have been this boy. Then we have Thomas Seymour getting rather intimate with uh, Elizabeth while she was a teenager, while she was at Catherine Parr's uh, household, in Catherine Parr's household after Catherine Parr had married Thomas Seymour. He was described as going into her, uh, her room while she was in bed. Uh, he was described as tickling her and stroking her buttocks and just being rather sort of intimate with her. Surely Thomas Seymour would have noticed if Elizabeth was actually a boy. Then we have the fact that Elizabeth's body was never really her own as princess and queen. She would have been bathed and dressed by her ladies. They would have helped her to use the closed stool, i.e. the, uh, the bathroom. Um, they kept an eye on her sheets uh, for her menstrual health. And one lady would sleep with her as well. She was never alone. There's no way that she could have hidden the fact that she was a boy. Then we have the fact that Philip of Spain's uh, emissary bribed the queen's laundress for details on Elizabeth's menstrual health. And the laundress reported that the queen was functioning normally, i.e. that her sheets and linen rags showed that she was menstruating. Then we also have the fact that Elizabeth was physically examined during marriage negotiations with France to see that she was uh, still capable of uh, bearing children. So she had intimate physical examinations and that definitely would have shown that she was a male in disguise. Then there's Elizabeth's close relationship with Robert Dudley as well. Uh, yeah, none of it adds up. So I agree with you, Teasel. I think it is complete poppycock. I think we can lay to rest the idea that Elizabeth I was actually a man. She was a woman. She was a strong woman. And we like her, don't we, Teasel? Do we like Elizabeth I? Not quite as good as Henry VIII, apparently, in Teasel's uh, view. But she's pretty close. What do you think? See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Teasel's Tudor Trivia